Hi, welcome to our first ever Popular Mechanics Google Plus Hangout. We're here at Galpin Auto Sports in Van Nuys, California. I'm Tom Moore. I write the Top Shop section annually in the May and June issues of Popular Mechanics. We're here talking about our 2013 vehicle, which is a Mini Cooper Countryman. I'd like to start by introducing our experts here from Galpin Auto Sports, also known as GAS. We'd like to ask the guys how they got to gas both literally and figuratively. Let's start with uh, Steve McCord, who's our general manager here at Gas. Hi guys, how are you? My name is Steve McCord. I'm with Galpin Auto Sports, general manager. Been with Galpin uh, for over 30 years, and uh, this is, I think, one of the premier automotive uh, aftermarket shops in the world. We have probably one of the best teams of people that uh, that you could find in the business. And, uh, and we are certainly honored to be a part of the Popular Mechanics build. I think when uh, everybody gets a chance to see this vehicle, we're going to be, I think, very impressed with it. Thanks, Steve. Now we'd like to have designer Doug Bruniger tell us a little bit about his background and uh, what he drives. How you doing? I'm Doug Bruniger. I'm the concept designer over here at Gas. Uh, I get the beautiful job of coming up with all these awesome creations and uh, basically get to create the game plan. Um, to start off, I drive a 2005 Acura RSX uh, JDM boy, um, and uh, I basically got into Galpin Auto Sports uh, meeting um, Bo Bachman through uh, my alma mater, Art Center College of Design, um, where I specialize in transportation design. Uh, started here as an intern, and uh, slowly but surely ended up working my time uh, here as a full-time employee. and. Uh, get the honor of working with all these gents and uh, creating uh, some cool cars and creations for all you guys to enjoy. Thanks, Doug. Next up, we have J.D. Hendrickson, the lead fabricator here. Um, what's your background, J.D.? Uh, background for me, or first I should say, uh, hi guys, J.D. Hendrickson here. Uh, like I said, fabricator. Uh, background, I come from our own family, so I've basically cars is all I know. Um, so family uh, originally from Wisconsin. Family owns a number of automotive businesses uh, as far as uh, first started as a, a gas station and then uh, into a repair facility uh, and a used car lot and then a uh, parts store. So like I said, I've been around cars all my life um, and uh, knew that was in my blood and that's what uh, I was going to end up doing. Uh, shortly after high school, I actually graduated and then moved to Oklahoma where I worked and taught at an uh, electronic school called Acoustic Edge. And I uh, worked there for about five and a half years and then uh, hooked up with the guys out here and, uh, and moved out to, to help build uh, some cars out here and been out here for uh, a little over five and a half years now. Great. And finally, we have Mad Mike, who needs no introduction. Oh, for real? I don't need no introduction, y'all. What's cracking, y'all? I'm Mad Mike, uh, Galpin Auto Sports, the number one custom automotive shop in the world. I've been uh, here at Galpin for the last nine years going on 10 years, um, just a great place to work. I've been working on cars my entire life. I think I started when I was about four years old, working on little wooden clocks, and building model cars, lowrider bikes, uh, all kind of crazy car stuff through high school and college. I went to the Air Force a little while, served a little time over in Desert Storm, came back, and then I was just banging ever since, man. It's it's awesome building all this crazy stuff, and man, I've been reading Popular Mechanics since she, since I can read. Love it. Great. Now, we just wanted to ask you guys your most memorable experience you've had with a car, briefly. Um, why don't we start with Steve, just off the top of your head, the most fun you've had in a vehicle. Well, one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, about building vehicles is is making them purpose built. So when when there are so many bills that go on today where it's all about aesthetics. It just looks. And the next thing you know, you're out there trying to drive this thing and something's just not working. One of the things that I thought was really an inspiration on this vehicle was the way uh, JD and Doug and Mad Mike and, and really the entire team came together with this is, uh, is the fact that the vehicle actually works. It, you know, you, put, you can put the pedal down, brakes, handling, suspension. Uh, you know, every bit about the vehicle to me was uh, was just an inspiration. It was fun to drive, uh, great handle, great feel. Uh, seats inside the vehicle had so much comfort to it, uh, not to mention support. So purpose-built uh, to me is something that 
that is, is an inspiration to me. Great. Um, why don't we flip it to Doug and tell us a little bit about the background of the Mini here and how the concept originated. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was a great story. Um, so we sat down with Bruce uh, a couple of months ago, and uh, we're shooting around ideas on what we exactly want to do with this vehicle. Um, and uh, JD brought up the idea, let's do a rally theme. We just got... We just got done with uh, doing um, a nice Ford Focus ST for SEMA, um, and we thought maybe it'd be a cool idea to bring that into this build. So um, I actually have one of the preliminary. And actually, we're going to raise it and make it more off-road terrain uh, to face terrain. And uh, and actually, we're going to raise it and make it more off-road terrain uh, to face terrain. And uh, can, you guys, can you guys hear us right now? Sorry, technical difficulties. Mike, can you hear us? Okay, Doug, we lost you there for a second. There you are, back. And just to jump in here, I think one of the other things that was interesting about this project was that um, we involved some of the sponsors in the decision-making process. Um, I don't know, were you able to, um, were you able to see the British Racing Green rendering? So that was our original, one of our original concepts was rendered in British Racing Green. We were working with Duplicolor, and we just thought that that would be difficult to match since there are so many different versions of British Racing Green. Hey, Gabby, do you have a second? Wow. And... Um, Okay, basically we're having a couple of technical difficulties here. I think you are. The microphone might be muted. Yes. Okay, hopefully we're back now. We we lost Doug. Um, so basically, Steve, if you want to pick it up here, we did some focus groups and roundtabled it. If you'd just like to tell us how we arrived at the point we are at now. Well, I know uh, one of the things that I thought uh, was, was, was kind of cool is I loved it that many got involved in, in – uh, we're really inspired by the rally, the rally theme since Mini's been involved with the Dakar. And if anybody's ever watched the Dakar, I'm telling you, those guys, those guys deserve medals that I, I don't even know how. Somebody needs to make those guys medals, not just pull them out of a out of a mold. But you know, Dakar is something that if you haven't seen it and you and you are inspired at all by motorsports, you got to watch it at least once. It's, it's truly amazing, and many has campaigned their vehicles in these Dakar rallies. So having many involved and really behind the, the, uh, the rally-inspired project was, I think, one of the bigger, uh, bigger things on the project is seeing, seeing this thing come to life right from Doug's hand is, uh, is, 
is just to me was one of the was one of the highlights. And in the May issue, which is on the newsstand now, Popular Mechanics, we have a few photos here from Dakar. A bit of our inspiration here for the vehicle. Like I say, we did uh, we decided to lift it instead of lowering it. Um, we did some research on the mini forums, and we found a couple of companies that make products for the countrymen. There aren't a whole lot of them, but one called Cooper Crap actually makes a two-inch lift kit for the countrymen. And then we also found um, some nice racing-inspired coilover shocks from KW Suspension. So that gave us a little extra fender well clearance and ground clearance. Um, and then a little bit more travel, too, which is kind of nice. It gave that suspension just a little bit more travel to to uh, to dampen over the over heavy bumps. Great. Now we have a reader question from Dave Thompson. Um, he wants to know how how the thing handles off road. Um, Steve, put some seat time in it, some time in it, and can uh, fill us in on that. Well, thanks for your question. I, I, I'd have to say I wasn't really sure what to expect when we when we took the vehicle off road. The first thing I thought was, well, I'm going to I'm going to tighten my seat belts down a little bit tighter because I thought my head might go through the uh, headliner, but I was pretty shocked at how well this vehicle handled being an all four um, you know, computer controlled. There are a few switches that you can play with by turning off traction control and um, and some of the suspension modifications that we made with uh, JD behind the wheel go, going through wheel tire combinations. Uh, the coilover shocks, uh, special alignment specs. I, I would say the my, my first impression was, I, I was like, wow, I, I couldn't believe it. We had the uh, vehicle on uh, some uneven road surface. We had, we had it at speed on fire roads, which had a washboard effect to it um, that didn't really feed back too much through the wheel, which I was pretty shocked about. I thought we'd have so much feedback that I would literally have my teeth falling out of my head, but uh, uh, overall, between bumps, uh, washboard on fire road, we even had it uh, doing a little four-wheeling. I think I had it up on bills maybe a couple of times, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly. So overall, really impressed with the vehicle. I, I was actually shocked, so uh, hopefully I answered your questions, but that vehicle did extremely well off-road. Yeah, I, nice. I drove it also. And I, on the freeway, that thing was amazing. And, uh, you know, driving off of curbs and stuff, oh, man. This thing, when you guys see it, it's going to be one of the ama most amazing uh, countrymen you've ever seen in your life. It's, it's so much fun to drive. I tried to get it on two wheels, but it didn't work. But it's really, really fun to drive. Well, you try to one-up me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, Mike, can you tell us a little? A little bit about the interior and some of the electronics that you added into the vehicle. Oh, the interior is amazing. Um, JD had the guys bolster up the seats a little bit, so now the seats hug your body. It, it's it's like somebody giving you a great big hug when you're driving it. And then uh, <laughs> JD JD put a custom roll cage in the front, all the way to the back. It's so much fun having the roll cage in there because, you know, you feel safe and, you know, trying to get the thing on two wheels is kind of fun too. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to do that. And then the stereo upgrade, uh, Arc Audio hooked us up with these new mini amps and they put out so much power. The mini comes with this uh, round uh, head unit that's in the dash. It's really cool. It controls everything in the car. So uh, we bumped it up with the Arc Audio amps and Arc Audio speakers, and man, that thing sounds amazing. So, JD, can you talk a little bit about the roll cage and what it took to fabricate that? You put a couple of unique little twists in it. Mike, can you redirect that question? We can't uh, hear Tom or Steve talking. Oh, come over to my office. <laughs> or just tell me the question and I'll answer it here. <laughs> oh, uh, he said um, <laughs> the the roll cage, the things, the different things you did to the roll cage. Um, how did you design that, and what was your thought and inspiration behind that? Okay, what all happened, or what all we did to the roll cage? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, well, it typically, obviously, roll cage first starts with your your main hoop that's 
behind the driver and passenger seat. So that's kind of called your foundation because um, that's your starting point. So we went from there. We knew we wanted to make it a full roll cage that went all the way to the back. Um, we hey, J.D., we, we can't hear you. In all uh, the seats. J.D., we can't, we can't hear you, so um, all right, I'll be we're right going to use Mad Mike as the translator. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our bandwidth there. So here comes J.D. He's going to fill us in a little bit on the roll cage. He did some pretty nice <laughs> customs on it. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Get too close in there. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll start over. I, I don't know, just in case if you guys didn't hear uh, what. But uh, with the roll cage, uh, we started, obviously, the, you have to start with the your main hoop, which is going to be behind, behind your driver and passenger seat. Um, and then everything kind of gets built off from there. So starting with that main first tube, um, and we knew, obviously, we wanted to do four-point harnesses in, in every seat that was going to be in there. So it's going to be, uh, we change it from actually a five-passenger or four-passenger. So just start with the main hoop and then work our way back. Um, and then you do the crossbars behind to where the uh, uh, the four links come back and, and attach to there. Um, and then also, obviously, since we switched to the uh, four seater, we had a open spot in the seat uh, where where your uh, you know the the sixty forty part is in the back. Um, so incorporated into there was a, a new armrest, and then underneath that is where uh, we hit a a battery for for backups so that way, as far as wanted to uh, for the winch and. Uh, uh, you might not supposed to hear about that just yet, um, but uh, the stereo system and uh, and some of the other electronic stuff that we uh, had to stash and hit away, so that's hidden underneath there. And then uh, uh, Stanley was on board, and uh, so there's a uh, a toolbox that's incorporated in it, so that got uh, incorporated into the uh, into the roll cage as well. So it's a pretty complex one. Uh, everything got built inside the car, uh, welded up, and then after it was all welded up, then I had to cut it out. Um, so that way we could uh, send it off and get to, to powder coated and painted. Um, so then you have the special joints that allow it to be able to uh, come out and those get welded out or welded. In, I'm sorry, um, and then that way it's uh, technically it's completely removable. So it's, uh, it's uh, put together in uh, three large pieces. And not to divulge too much here, but the paint was kind of a unique challenge because, like obviously, like we mentioned, we start out with British Racing Green. We wanted to come up with a unique color, something that wasn't a stock mini color, but also working with the Duplicolor um, paint shop finishing system, we used their 12 basically over-the-counter colors. And um, JD, can you can you talk a little bit about how we arrived at the kind of teal color that um, is actually on the vehicle? Yeah. Um like you saw in, in the Doug's uh, renderings that I had before, we initially had a, uh, a custom color mixed up, and, and we uh, approached Duplicolor with that. And, and unfortunately, just like uh, almost any build out there, not only just for this build, but it seems like it's the nature of our beasts in this business, um, timing was not our friend. And uh, they were, were unable to, to be able to actually produce that color that we wanted to uh, make up um, in the amount of time. So then they uh, approached us with basically what they had, and call it uh, you know a dozen, fifteen different colors, and we didn't want to. Uh, obviously, we're a, we're a custom shop, so we don't want to run anything that was just straight right out of the can. We wanted to be able to, to mix it up a little bit and, and make something custom. So we uh, we took two of their colors and uh, and created a formula and, and made our own custom color. So we're just uh, um, painters call it bartending, and that's either really exactly what it was. Just taking some colors and, and start mixing until we. Uh, found a color that we liked and uh, so we had a couple that we uh, you know were, were very uh, ugly and uh, those uh, <laughs> definitely hit, hit the floor and then we had what we uh, what we liked and what's uh, actually on the car and I think in the first issue you guys have already seen a little bit to where it's kind of a, a blue tealish. We, we have a, a sneak peek of it here in the paint shop which I can put up while I'm asking Steve. Um, here's there's just a little bit of a preview in the May issue of the color that we came up with. I believe it was the um, championship white and the competition blue were the two duplicolor. Mid midnight blue. Mid midnight blue that we mixed to get the teal. And also the hugger orange we will use for some accents contrasted nicely. Um, just wanted to ask each guy here their personal favorite part of the car, the, the aspect that stands out the most, if we can start with Steve. Well, you know, going back to kind of what Mike started to talk about with the interior, you know, one thing that I feel about 
uh, about a vehicle that's got some race inspiration in, inspiration to it is uh, is one of the first things that you that you feel when you get in a car, and that's the seat. And I know that there's a lot of big name seat companies out there, and most of them we all sit in. If you're sitting in a race car, that uh, that you're going to go out and either run a hundred mile an hour pass or or whether you run road race, uh, any, anything that's out there. But we took a factory seat and we made a factory seat literally as close to a race inspired big name racing seat like Sparco or Recaro or any one of the big names. And we took that factory seat as uh, Mike alluded to and, and we built the bolsters up to where when you sit in the seat, you're in the seat. You buckle it down and you're on throttle you actually feel the car holding you in place. So it kind of goes back to a little bit what I was talking about with having a purpose-built, race-inspired vehicle. When when you've got a good feeling behind it, that makes the vehicle all that much better. It's easier to handle. It's easier to drive. Um, you're more comfortable in it. And, uh, you know, that's the last thing anybody wants to do in a, in a vehicle today is, is want to get out of it after you've gotten into it. And when you can get into a vehicle, feel comfortable, drive it for long periods of time, rough, smooth, whatever it is, that that's something that uh, I think says a lot. And I think, again, our team just did an outstanding job in taking those seats and building those seats up to be a race-inspired seat. J.D., what was your favorite part? Um, I'd probably have to go with with the roll cage. Um, it, it was the most intricate and probably time-consuming as far as one, you know, sole part of it uh, that uh, it, it was, uh, you know, in, in incorporated in the build, so there's a, it's a lot of guessing and checking, and, and it's you know pretty critical and, and, and time crucial. So it, uh, I would probably have to say that. Um, and then second to that, uh, GoPro is a sponsor of that. So uh, I don't know if uh, if there's anything in the in the first issue about the GoPro, so I won't give away too much. But we made some custom mounts that that uh, everyone that's seen that and been able to, to kind of get their eyes on it uh, has been a big fan of that. So it, uh, it's one of those things that uh, we were excited about it and uh, it, it makes it all that much better when uh, you're excited about something and, and it, it comes out and everyone else it, it kind of shares it with you as far as it, and looks at it and comments on it so that would probably be a it here a little bit and uh, Mad Mike is going to give us a little preview of the actual vehicle if you don't mind going on the phone here oh yeah oh all right let me uh let me find the phone we figure as long as we're talking about it, we'll give you a little taste of what we'll have in the June issue it'll be on the newsstand on May 21st so Mad Mike is just going to give us a little bit of flavor here of the finished product um, which actually we, we drove it out to Joshua Tree and Gorman where they actually do some uh, Gorman they hold some California rally series events up there and we took it out as if it were an actual rally vehicle and uh, put it through the paces it uh, held up really well Steve was our stunt driver so as he alluded to earlier he um, he flogged it pretty well got some pretty interesting photos so now we'll see if we have see if we have Mad Mike here Hey, what's happening? Do you guys see me? Yep. All right. Oh, right, here's our collection. Really, really nice in here. And here's your rally. Hey, Steve, can you come over and help me? Really? 
Oh, that's the car right there. And uh, I just want to show you what you guys are going to be getting in this next issue. This thing's amazing. Not too, little thing big. Not too much. Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> that <cost> extra. <laughs> Look at that. You got the wheels. All. Show as much as you dare, huh? Look at that right there. <laughs> oh. Look at the GoPro mounts. Yeah, JD hooked this one up. This is amazing. And look how high this car sets now. I mean, the travel on it is amazing. And these colors, whew, they pop so hard. So now you guys want to know my favorite part? My favorite part would happen to be these lights. But guess what? There's some more lights on here. And if you want to see them, you got to make sure you stay tuned because they're all over the place. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, there's no shortage of lights. How's your phone floating, Mike? That pretty much gives us an overview here of our um, Top Shop 2013 project, Mini Cooper Rally Man, custom made by gas here. We just wanted to thank some of the people that made this all possible. Mini USA, Jim McDowell, Natalie Bowders. Also, Mini in Europe, um, Andreas Lampke, and our intrepid Hearst marketing team in New York, Amanda Luganbill and Chad Meany, and then also the gas team. We uh, appreciate everyone joining us here. And please check out all the details in the June issue of Popular Mechanics Magazine. Thanks. Take it easy, guys.